Hey folks, it's your wacky neighbor, the pipe maker. I've been making smoking pipes out of stone for 25 years now in low volume. Drilling the holes was always the bottleneck in the process, but is no more. After my latest upgrades, I can finish this task in just about 30 minutes, as you can see in this 40 times speed time lapse. I gave an overview of the entire process in another video, but I glossed over the drilling steps there. The major innovation is my rotating fixture. The stone work piece only needs to be clamped up and aligned once, and the fixture ensures the holes will intersect perfectly every time, without much fuss. Meanwhile, a water spray eliminates any dust and keeps things cool. I've put a lot of effort into these machines in the hopes that one day I'll be able to knock these pipes out quick enough to sell affordably. Still bottlenecks with the grinding and sanding, but the drilling dragon has now been slain. First of all, though, I should explain why I chose this particular drill a 15 inch palm grant. That is because of the five inch quill trap that it has. Most machines tend to bottom out at about two or three inches uh, and drilling a hole any deeper than the quill will go is not very convenient. This was the smallest machine I could find that would drill a hole that deep. Just recently I've upgraded the drill with a digital readout that gives me a display of how far I've dropped the quill. This was the original bracket that came with the drill press. A buddy of mine had access to a full machine shop, so he made this part for me that I designed. My buddy got it made for bagels, so I'm pretty excited about that. You can see how tight a fit it is here, right next to the spring. It's just perfect. And the sheet metal brackets on top and bottom, I made myself. It is just those two nuts that are attaching it. These work as a depth stop. When the machine is configured for grinding mode, I use this cutoff portion of a pretzel container to hold the top of the splash bag. I chose this spot to mount the linear encoder so that would still fit, and these drilling mode upgrades haven't affected grinding mode at all. It would be typical in a setup like this for the numbers to go up when you lower the quill, but I've assembled it upside down so I'm getting negative numbers, and there is a reason for that. I wanted the intersection point inside the stone to be assigned zero, so the readout could give a countdown of how much farther I need to drill. But the preset function doesn't allow you to input a negative number. So with a positive preset, I wanted the values to decrease as I drill. Most people do their work on a drill press on the heavy duty table. Even with this in its lowest position, it is still above the surface where I have the rotary table mounted. So there just wasn't enough room. To... And therefore I put my Fixtures all on the base. I have an inch and a half solid aluminum just as a spacer XY sliding table made by Palmgren, same company that makes the drill press itself. I really could have gotten away with the one axis version of the table. I figured if I was buying a sliding table, it would be handy to have the X and Y in the future. And if I only got the one axis version, I just would have needed a thicker aluminum spacer to put this at the right level. Palmgren also makes a similar rotary table, but I chose this one from the Taiwanese brand Vertex because it seemed a little beefier and more robust. You could lower uh, the handle and just rotate it freely as you would like and then uh, re-engage it. It has these locks, which the Palmgren did not. My custom clamping fixture for drilling pipes, I store on the back of the rotary table. It is uh, fairly heavy and uh, goes into that notch so it can't slide off. This is a Morse taper number three dead center intended for the tailstock of a lathe. And it fits in here perfectly in the middle of the rotating table. And this point is directly at the center of the axis of rotation. Here's some hex bar stock that I have indexed to my drill chuck. The point was ground, so it should be directly on the center axis of the machine. And the rotating table has been positioned so its center intersects that of the drill. And I have a preset so that it reaches zero right when the tip of the drill reaches the center of rotation. And I've created this alignment center pointer for use on the front of the table. This is proof that you don't need a 3D printer if you have a large hoard of random small parts. The base pie-shaped extrusion that was from a window latch, ID badge springs. This is bent such a way that I could adjust the position and it would avoid some obstacles in the way. And this foot bottom part of an 80-20 bracket that was sawed off. It will slide along the left side of this slot 
uh, the springs hold it firmly against that side and it can't wiggle around. So this end is very repeatable. I can slide this forward and back and that center point is always right along the center line. This plastic template slips on the end of the center pointer and serves as a guide for where the bowl will wind up. I've now moved the clamping fixture from its storage location on the back to the front of the rotating table. Really hard to see what's going on with the splash bag in the way, so I'm gonna disassemble this whole thing to give you all a better view. All right, that's secure. The base of the fixture was made out of this 8-inch piece of cast iron, chosen because it is inexpensive, because it was low precision. It was already 8 inches around, it already had pretty good flat surfaces. It was billed as half-inch thick oversize, wound up being more like three-quarters of an inch thick. Had to mill these slots from both sides, which was a neat trick. Barely perceptible mismatch, so I was pretty proud of myself for there and drill and tap these six holes, that one on the edge. So I didn't have to tap a hole all the way deep. I actually tapped larger threads and put a threaded insert in there. So it's just a plain hole all the way through with tapped threads and the insert just up there. The rest of these components were all cut from the same piece of L extrusion, two and a half by two and a half, half inch thick. I just bought a one foot length. It was very reasonably priced and had enough to cut all three of these parts. I use these rubberized magnet sheets as spacers and cushions. piece of stone fits in just like that with the top exposed where the bowl will go and the back exposed where the draw hole will go. The major improvement of this fixture over the previous ones is that I'm indexing off the top. So it does not matter if the block I am starting with is parallel. This last custom piece is how I mount the clamp. I couldn't easily use a traditional vise to hold this up because the screw would be protruding all the way out the bottom. So I found this expanding toggle clamp. Put this little cage on top with a rubber band, with a little ball there, and it is self-aligning. Now got the fixture attached to the machine again. It is just loosely attached. I can adjust the height with that screw. Take a piece of stone. And I can use my center pointer. And that will show me where the bowl would line up. Looks like I could make it a little deeper, so I will raise the fixture. The scribe lines on that plastic show different sizes of bowls, so I don't necessarily have to use the bigger one. Notice the curve of this wire is such that it allows me to get to that bolt without moving anything. Go to another position. I do have to take this off. I've got the Splash Collection drain bag reinstalled now. The magnets hold the bag in place and give a cushion for the stone to bear against. I'd initially counted on coming up with some sort of origami technique to fold the bag around this part too, but after a lot of frustration, I couldn't figure out how to make that work the way I had envisioned. Not really a big deal if it rusts though, so I decided to just bolt it right through the bag, which provides easy, unencumbered access everywhere I need. That said, it would be swell if that part could be kept dry, and if I could remove the bag to clean it without having to unbolt anything. If you're an origami genius and have any ideas, let me know.
I'd gift you one of my pipes as a thank you if you're the first to suggest a plan that I wind up using. Keep in mind, aside from retaining access to drill both holes, any solutions also need to keep the drain on the lower right and not interfere with the use of the center pointer or access to the attachment bolts. Here's a lovely piece of Picasso marble I'm going to try to drill today. It's got some lovely figures in it. It's got some green as well as the black, white, gray, and tan. It's now rigidly secured to the fixture, and the fixture is aligned with the rotating axis of the table, and you can see where I intend the bowl to go. Prior to my recent upgrade to add the digital readout, I would have to adjust the sliding table back and forth a few times during the process, so the drill would clear the workpiece and I could use a height gauge in front of it to set the depth stop. Since I don't need to do that anymore, I only need to adjust this one time to set the center point where I'd like to drill in the middle of the pipe. And once it's there, I never have to touch this and there's no risk of any misalignments. In the vertical position now, water system's all set up. But before I drill the long draw hole, it's very important that I start it out on center. And that was a difficult thing to figure out how to do. Drill bushing didn't really work reliably. Machining a divot in advance didn't work at all. So I've come up with this center drill, 5 eighths hex stock, the biggest that'll fit in my truck. Got a bore hole where a 5 32nd, three inch long bit was uh, put in there and that holds it stiff enough so the tip doesn't walk when I start the hole. I index the bolt to the red part of the chuck because that is how the center was drilled in the first place to get it on axis. Turn on the water, turn on the drill, and I've got a perfectly centered start to the hole every time. I've now got the 6 inch 3 16 draw hole bit chucked up. I've got the bag held back with a magnet. Every drill bit out of the factory is a slightly different height. Every time I chuck it up, it's at a slightly different height. So in order to zero out my depth indicator, I use my 10 inch NIST certified standard. Ha ha ha. Actually, it is pretty close to exactly 10 inches on that side. Not so much on that side, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I've got a little dot, which I just always use and I just lower it so it just kisses it a little bit. You can see it move just slightly, and when it's just touching, I hit the origin button. Since I'm using the preset feature, it zeroes out to 4.63, which is the distance from that dot down to the center point. So I just have to do that every time I change the bit. Let's go. Water. Contact. Put this back as a witness plate in case there's any leaks. Three inches to go. to intersect with another hole, I actually go past zero to negative 0.08. Get me close. And there we go. Let's bring this all out nice and smooth. got this drill bit attached. I'm just going to use that as a visual reference to get the angle. But I got to start the hole with the center drill.
and breaking through. Huzzah! <sighs> All right, and now for the bowl. I now have an 11 16ths bit mounted for what I would call a medium sized bowl. I've slowed the machine down. Take my 10 inch standard and zero that out to 463. Contact. Just with a little countersink kiss, make sure everything's centered, looks good. For the bowl, I stop at 0 0.10, so I'm coming up close. All right, let's stop there and see how it looks. I use this little probe tool to check. Magnifier app on my phone. Put that down there and magnify it. I want it to be like a knife edge. So yeah, I can go a little bit deeper here, but not much, just from there to there. All right, so instead of 0.1, I'll go down to like 0 0.08 and we'll take another look. All right, 0.09. Let's just see how that looks. Yeah, I'm not going to get much better than that. So that is done. Woot woot, no breaks, no fractures. Nice. These are my fancy calipers. That's tight, uh, but it's a very deep bowl, about as deep as I could go with this piece. I just got to be really careful when I shape this thing that I don't remove any material right there on the bottom because it is, it is thin. Thin. Eek. Not a lot. But it'll work. Let's clean this thing out. Instead of making dust, I make silty water out of this filtering recirculation system on the bottom of the cart. That's the thin spot where I'm not gonna grind any deeper. You can see all the nice figures here. And greens. Incidentally, it is necessary to go back over the bottom of the hole with a round bit to give it more of a smooth funnel air scoop shape for better airflow. This is the before. And here you can see after. It is a subtle change to the shape, but it makes a really big difference in how the air flows. It gives you a smooth uh, smoking experience with even burning. This one was drilled with an 11 16 bit, a three quarter inch screen. Fits in there perfectly, seats right on the bottom and is rigidly fixed, is not gonna come out to wiggle around on you and is easily removable. I put the little notch right there to make it a little easier to get your pry tool under there. Just a little T-pin. And you can take some tweezers or some pliers and easily pull the screen right out. And then you just uh, hold it over a flame till there's nothing but ashes left, flick ashes away, and you can reuse these screens many times before they're torn and you have to replace them. By the magic of cinema, cut to... And here we go. There's the finished pipe, number 115. They all have plastic caps that allow you to extinguish it immediately and put it right in your pocket. I do really love this Picasso marble from Utah, as you can see by samples of my work here. This latest one, number 115, has the deepest bowl of any I've made yet. Compare with this one, for instance, has a bowl that's only 0.3 inches deep, which is quite enough, but this is more than double as deep. That may even be too deep. Let's find out. I'm curious how much material I can pack in here at once. 
and if I can still draw air easily through that much material. about full. 0.7 grams or 0 0.025 ounces. All right, let's give it a try. Yeah, that works good. It took 14 sessions of one or two hits to finish all the material, as you can see in this 8 times speed time lapse. Some people appreciate the ritual of packing a fresh bowl before every smoking session, and would prefer a smaller pipe. But larger pipes are not only for heavy smokers. Many light smokers are just lazy, like myself, and prefer a larger bowl just so it doesn't have to be fixed as often. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching.